Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to set up an equatorial mount. It's the EQ6R Pro mount from Skywatcher. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our mount is facing towards the north. So in my case, this notch next to the north leg is pointing directly north. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the tripod is actually level. So for that, I use one of these little bubble levels and I'll use a credit card or a gift card. So I'll put that right on top of the tripod here and I'll put the bubble level right on top of that. And then I'll, I can adjust the height of the legs to make sure that the mount is perfectly level using this bubble level. Now I've already, I've already leveled this mount so I don't need to do that at this point. So you can put away the bubble level. Now what we're going to do is actually uh, grab the mount head and put it right on top of the tripod. So here's the mount head. It's a little bit heavy but uh, the handle definitely helps make it a little bit easier to set up. There we go. Lock that in a little bit. And now we're just going to tighten it in. There we go. And we tighten the tripod spreader. Okay. Now that we've got that down, got this down. And take out the counterweight bar. There we go. And I've already put some markings over here on the mount for the zero position. So I just like to get those all lined up. They don't need to be perfect, but close enough is good. And since we're going to be polar aligning the mount, you need to turn this top um, dovetail holder this way so that the knobs are facing upwards so you can actually see through the polar scope. So we do that, lock that down, and I'm just going to remove the cap so now I can actually see through the polar scope because I've taken out the counterweight bar and I've turned the knobs upwards so I can actually see through. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a rough polar align. So I take off the cap. I can look through the polar scope right at Polaris and get it roughly somewhere close to the center. This is just our initial rough polar align without the scope or the counterweights on because it is much easier to make adjustments without any weight on the mount. So I get it close enough to north, reasonably close, because it might shift a little bit once you actually put the scope on. Uh, so yeah, close enough is good enough for now. So once you've done that, what we're going to do is now we're going to install the counterweights. So take out the nut, don't lose this, put this somewhere safe. And I'm going to be installing four counterweights because I'm mounting a really huge scope on here. Number two, and number four. Okay, now we install the locking nut back, the toe saver. So this is to prevent your counterweights from falling off and hitting your foot. Okay, I'll bring the counterweights back down. So I've already balanced and marked the bar uh, as to where the counterweights go. In my case, they go all the way to the end to balance the C11. 
So you might only have to use one or two counterweights for your scope. Is whatever it takes to actually balance the scope. So now that that's done, I'm going to lock this axis and I'm going to lock this other axis as well so it doesn't move. And I'm going to loosen these locking knobs so I can install the scope there. So I'm just going to grab the scope. Okay, here is the scope C11 Edge HD from Solastron. So it's a heavy scope. I believe the scope alone is 28 pounds, but one person can mount it. Okay, this is the easiest way I've found to mount the C11. So just get that locked in there. And there we go. And now you just lock the knobs. Make sure the knobs are locked down tight. You don't want the scope slipping off the mount. So once that's tight, okay, you can unlock the lever and you can check for balance. In my case, I have to install the finder scope as well. So this is the finder scope or the guide scope that I use. It's a 60 millimeter the mirror or lens diameter and 240 millimeter focal length and I'm using the QHY 178 for guiding so we'll install that there we go that's locked down tight and we check the balance a little bit front heavy right now so I can move it back a little bit okay tighten that down check the balance okay that's perfectly balanced so that's pretty good just make sure the locks are tight so that's perfectly balanced now if I bring it up over here stays in one place. Now the reason I have the guide scope over here and not directly on the top dovetail is because I'm using an electronic focuser on the side and with that focuser if I don't have this guide scope offset to one side whenever I try to balance the mount like this the mount automatically moves this way. So to offset the weight of this focuser I have to put the guide scope on this side so the mount is perfectly balanced so if I bring this to home position, it stays right there. So you want it to be balanced. If your mount's moving to the left or to the right, you have to move your finder scope to counteract that motion. And once we're balanced in this axis, what I'm going to do is loosen the RA axis and make sure we're balanced in RA. So it is a little bit counterweight heavy right now, so what I can do for that is move the counterweights up a little bit now if you're imaging in the in the east for example uh, you would want the scope to be counterweight heavy so you always want the scope uh, sorry the mount system the whole system to be a little bit east heavy so let's see if this balances it out so if your mount is a little bit east heavy uh, then what's going to happen is that your gears are going to be engaged better and you have less issues with guiding and tracking so let's see if it's balanced now okay that's much better balanced slightly east heavy just slightly so when i let go of the counterweight it just very very slowly moves downwards so in this case the scope is slightly east heavy in right ascension which is the counterweight bar so that's good so we've got uh, everything perfectly balanced so I'm just going to leave it there, lock the levers, and at this point I would install the camera. Actually, uh, I should have installed the camera here before, but I don't know what camera I'm going to be using, so I didn't end up installing a camera, but you would install your camera before you actually start balancing everything. So uh, tonight we're not going to be installing a camera, but install your camera have your setup as you're going to be using it to image and then make sure everything is perfectly balanced.
Okay, so now that we're all balanced, the next thing we're gonna do is install the cables. So I plug everything into this 12 volt uh, car battery. Well, it's a 35 amp hour AGM battery actually. Uh, but it's a 12 volt battery just like your car battery. So that's how I power everything when I'm out there in the field. And I use this splitter. This is a one way to three way splitter. And I just plug that in. And I run that cable through the handle of the mount. Plug that into the battery. And next thing I'm going to do is plug in my dew heater. So since it gets quite cold outside and pretty damp sometimes, I don't want the corrector plate on the telescope to freeze or actually to uh, dew up. So I have this Kendrick dew heater for the 11 inch Edge HD. And I plug that into this Kendrick dual channel dew heater. Plug that in there. And I run the cable for that through the handle of the mount as well and plug it into the dew heater, uh, the dew controller. And I can plug that cable into the splitter. And next thing I'm gonna do is plug in the mount. There we go. And I can plug that into the splitter as well. There we go. So we've got uh, everything plugged in. So uh, what we're gonna do now is plug in the hand controller. So I actually put the hand controller in this little neoprene sleeve. So what I can do is I can just drop in a chemical hand warmer or a little USB hand warmer in there. That'll keep the LCD from freezing over in the winter because it quite often gets to minus 20 or below uh, outside. So you don't want the LCD on that to freeze. Put that on here and plug that in. Okay, now we've got all the cables plugged in. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a more accurate polar align now that we have the counterweights and the scope on there, just in case anything moved uh, when we were installing the scope and the counterweights. So we can turn the mount on. And when we turn on the mount, that's going to turn on the illuminated polar scope in there. So we can actually see a little dial that tells us exactly where Polaris is supposed to go on the dial. So we can use an app on our phone like SynScan IT or Polar Finder uh, and that'll tell us exactly where Polaris is supposed to go on that clock dial. So we look on the app to see where Polaris is supposed to go and we look through the polar scope after we turn the scope sideways so we can actually look through the polar scope. And then we make adjustments in right ascension or declination using these knobs until Polaris uh, is in the right location on that uh, polar scope dial. Once we've done that, I'm just going to put this back to home position. There we go. That's back in home position. And uh, now we can. Uh, uh, basically uh, do a three point align or one point align, whatever we need, and we can start imaging or uh, do some visual. Now, if I'm planning to do some more advanced uh, deep sky imaging, I don't actually use the hand controller. I control everything directly from my uh, laptop. So in that case, what I would do is I would take out the hand controller completely. And then I would control everything from my laptop using a USB cable. Now this is a standard printer cable. And the EQ6R mount actually has a USB port on it that you can use to control the, uh, the mount from. If you have a Southstrong mount or some of the other mounts, you sometimes have to plug the cable into the hand controller and then plug that into the laptop. But the EQ6R Pro mount allows direct control through this USB cable and I'll plug in the other side of the USB cable directly into my laptop. So just like that I'm ready for some deep sky imaging and of course I would have to plug in the guide scope as well. I can plug that in here or I can plug that into my USB hub. Uh, the reason I installed this USB hub on top was that I can plug all the cables into this USB 3 hub and then I can just have one data cable running to the laptop, but that's optional, you don't really need that.
So uh, that's how you set up the EQ6R Pro mount uh, and the IGHD scope. So uh, again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.